Hi, and welcome to our tips for remote learning for students. My name is Brandon Reimkin. I'm the head of department for concept art and illustration here at CG Spectrum. So we'll kick things off with our health considerations. The first thing that we're going to talk about is stretching. We tend to be immobile when we work, so it's always good to get away from your working posture and get the body moving. It will likely help avoid some physical problems down the road. The next point we'll talk about is stretching your eyes. Constantly take visual breaks where you can focus on distant objects for a few seconds. It can help reduce eye strain and keep you working for longer. The next point we'll talk about is screen time and sleep. Sleep is so important to every aspect of health, but it is also important to the concept artist as we have to use our imaginations a lot. Make sure you give your brain a rest so you can be the most creative person possible. The next point is a no-brainer. We need to exercise. Exercise will keep the body feeling good and the mind clear, which are both necessary to be a great artist. Make sure that you take the time to even just get out of your desk and, as we mentioned before, stretch or go for a walk. It's going to help your creativity, to be sure. The next point will be is to manage your lighting. Make sure you aren't straining your eyes with poor lighting. If this means you have to add or remove lighting so that it is easier to see your screen, then make sure that you do that. It's going to make your workflow a lot easier. The last point in our health considerations will be socialization. In remote learning situations, a student can end up spending a lot of time inside working on a computer. For some, the mental stimulation you can get from social encounters can be a great way to help keep a healthy mindset. That said, if you're happier to be a lone wolf, then remote learning can be a very comfortable situation. So let's talk about our final considerations, which will be hardware based. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the microphone. For students, you don't need a high end microphone. I would just aim for something that captures reasonable audio and avoids any noise, background noise or interesting and weird technological sounds. The next piece of hardware that we're going to talk about is the webcam. As a student, you don't need to have a high-end cinema quality webcam. In some instances, you don't need a camera at all. For online learning, it can be a good purchase to help make classrooms more lively and help in communications with your peers and your mentor. The next hardware consideration is a big one for commercial artists that work digitally, and that is the digitizer. There are a variety of digitizers on the market that you can use. I personally have been using Wacom digitizers throughout my whole career. Wacom have a variety of options that suit different needs and budgets ranging from affordable travel size Intuos style tablets to the higher end display tablets like the Cintiq Pro. I have a smaller Intuos tablet that gives me a good range of pen pressure and drawing space while still being very compact. I tend to use an Intuos when I travel and have to pack light. Uh, this is a good option if you don't like tablets with screens, are always on the move, or don't have the budget for the Cintiq Pro. Wacom do make a solution for those looking for a middle ground between the portability and price of the Intuos tablets and the display capabilities of the Cintiq Pro line. Uh, the Wacom 1 and the smallest 16-inch Cintiq strike a nice balance between specification, portability, and price. I use a smaller Wacom display tablet when I have to work from abroad for longer periods of time because it does allow me to still see where I'm drawing, which is something that I like, and also it can pack into a suitcase. Finally, the top of the line Cintiqs are my favorite tools to work with when I'm spending long hours in my home office working on content. The Cintiq Pro range offer upwards of 8,000 levels of pressure for maximum stroke control, a large screen real estate that allows for more natural stroke gesture, good color reproduction, and high resolution so I can see all those little mistakes that I make. Next, we'll talk about stools or chairs. If you sit or stand, just make sure that you get a good quality piece of furniture as it will have to support you for the many hours of study. After that, the next hardware consideration would be the desk. I would get any desk that suits your environment. The desk should easily support your other hardware so that you're not struggling when you paint and or draw. Uh, Sit-stand desks are pretty common nowadays and are meant to allow you to be more mobile which can help with some of the negative health impacts of sedentary work. The next hardware consideration is the computer. 
You don't need a powerhouse of a supercomputer uh, as a student. You will tend not to be producing work that needs to be ultra high resolution. Uh, you can use a computer that has decent specs and get by. Modern laptops can be a great option if you're looking for balance between power and portability. So thank you for watching our tips for remote learning for students video. Hopefully there's been some helpful information in there for you. I guarantee if you put some of these tips into practice, you will see benefit in your learning and in your work.